Good morning. This Sunday, we are partnering with St. Christopher's, and in just a few moments, our pre-recorded liturgy will begin. But right now, we're going to take just a few minutes for an announcement, rather than interrupting our service midway. So I'd like to introduce our All Saints treasurer, Beth Wood, for Beth will be sharing her discernment and her ideas about stewardship and the potential that we all have to grow one step in our faith and our commitment to God by taking the time to prayerfully consider what God may be asking of each of us in this time and this place. Here's Beth. As you are aware by now, Consecration Sunday is fast, is fast approaching. Today, I wanted to share with you my story as a tither and some information about our, con our congregation's giving patterns. My story as a tither. My first tithe, I remember, is my mom giving me an allowance of 25 cents, two dimes, and one nickel with instructions that one dime would go into the offering plate on Sunday. The second um, nickel could go into, was to go into my bank and the third and the dime I could spend any way I wanted to. I still don't remember how I spent that dime that was all mine, um, but I believed in God and I'm a cradle Episcopalian. The next thing I remember is getting a dollar allowance. I got four quarters. I was so excited. Um, one went in the plate, one went in the bank, and of course I had two to spend any way I wanted to. Somewhere along this journey, I learned that a tithe is 10% and that I had been giving a whole quarter. I was probably around 10 or 12. I quickly adjusted my tithe to just 10 cents. I faithfully filled out my pledge cards and I deposited them in the plate every Sunday. I believed in God, but it was a very transactional relationship. As I grew older, my habits changed. I still pledged every year and would pay monthly so I wouldn't have to do it every week. Sometimes I'd get behind, and as I began to get jobs, babysitting, Orange Julius, etc., my mother reminded me that God got the first fruits. I continued to give through my high school years, but it was definitely not the first fruits. I was busy saving for college, paying for extracurricular activities, eating out, and in general, having a lot of fun. I believed in God, but I knew I was missing something about this relationship. I went off to college and tithing stopped altogether. Money was tight and life was hectic. As I prepared to graduate, I remember telling my grandfather that I will be so glad to have some money left over at the end of the month. I frankly was tired of tomato soup and peanut butter sandwiches. He replied with all seriousness, it's not about what you make, it's about what you spend. Following up with a talk on tithing. <laughs> and, that, and he very clearly said to me that the only place in the Bible where God tells you that it's okay to test him is in tithing. I'll, I'll never forget that conversation. I will continue, you know, I did continue um, to give to my special interest after that, food banks, missionaries, etc. but I did not tithe. Um, and it was a very conscious decision to give my gifts to God and his work, but not to tithe. I believed in God, but I really questioned this concept of faith and my relationship with God. Around the time I had children, I started tithing again. Still not as a full tithe, but regular. I would faithfully sit down after payday and write out my checks, my bills, and my gift to the church was a budgeted line item. I was again back to that transactional relationship. As I began to attend to my relationship with God, I found that I began to look at the tithe differently. God definitely doesn't need my money, but my tithe is a part of my journey. An acknowledgement that everything that I have comes from him. He is the Alpha 
Det är mer mig. I am thankful for everything that he has given me. Recognize that he is faithful and trustworthy. He does not move away from me. He is never distant or removed. So I'm sorry. No, I'm not really sorry. <laughs> um, those times that I felt he was not near were the times where I had walked away. I had stopped working on my relationship with him. Every two weeks, when I send my money, well, it's actually deducted from my bank account, it is a reminder to me that God is a living presence in my life. I have but to open my eyes and continue to build my relationship with him through prayer, Bible study, and worship with a family of believers. I'm very thankful that I have you. Okay. Every year, I prayerfully consider how God is asking me to respond with my time, with my talents, and with my treasure. As we move towards Consecration Sunday, I hope that each of us will be thoughtfully considering our answer to the spiritual question, what percentage of my income is God asking me to give? Now, let's look at the Grow One Step chart sent out in the email. It's a breakdown of our congregation's giving patterns. As you can see on the first step, we have 78 family units that do not pledge at all for the year. But of those 78 family units, we have 44 family units that make financial contributions to the church during the year. Our church family is very faithful. On each step are two numbers, a bold number that indicates the pledging family units at that level, and the second number is an indication of the number of non-pledging family units at that level. So look at the first step, zero to $4.99 a week. We have 23 family units that give at this level, three of which fill out pledge cards, and um, 20 that, that give at that level. And that levels, that's about a cup of, that's about the cost of a cup of coffee a week. At the next level, $5 to $9.99, we have 12 family units that give at this level, with three of them filling out pledge cards. If you think about what that is, during that, at that, that's about the cost of a fast food meal. Now let's go to Wendy's and get the full full. Um, the next level is the 10 to $20 a week, and we have 12 family units that give. And, and that's about the cost of purchasing um, either one theater ticket, because I heard they were open now, or the cost of a movie on Netflix. Um, I'll leave the rest of them there. You, they're there for you to look at, and as you can, and you can just see the rest of what's happening at our church family. Um, and, and take an opportunity to find where you are on the chart. Now, let's look at the weekly income chart that was also sent out on the email. Let your eyes go down the left side of the scale until you find your appropriate weekly salary. Now move your eyes across to your weekly giving level, um, which is the amount of money that you give to All Saints for God's work. Then move your eyes up to the top of the sheet to locate your percentage of income that that represents. During the next week, I'm sure each of us will be pondering what percentage of my income is God calling me to give. Please set aside some time this week to prayerfully consider how God is calling you to respond. God is faithful. Amen. Thank you, Beth. This is a strange season. And I imagine that it may seem strange to many of us that we're having these stewardship conversations with all that is happening around us but it also is the right time. We're often during period, periods of trials and confusion. We also have the opportunity to pause and rethink about our priorities and what's important in our lives. This week, you'll be receiving either a mailing or an email 
perhaps both, with some information about our estimate of giving forms, so either a form or a link. And I really ask that you seriously and prayerfully consider all that you've heard these past few weeks during our brief stewardship talks and sit with the Spirit and listen to how you may be nudged to commit of your resources to God. And I'll also ask if you could please respond to these links or return these cards by this coming Wednesday, the 21st, because we'll be gathering that information or creating on your behalf giving cards that will be presented at God's altar next week on Consecration Sunday. Thank you all for your continuing support of the mission at All Saints as we challenge ourselves in the world to love like Jesus, as we worship joyfully, serve compassionately, and grow spiritually. May God bless us all.